Hello, my name is Katherine Fitzgerald. I'm a master's student studying marine biology at the University of Maryland Centers for Environmental Science. I'm located at the Horn Point Laboratory in Cambridge, Maryland. I'm here today to show you how you can sample plankton at home. Now, the first thing that you need is a net. I'm going to show you how to make two different kinds of nets. The first design will be a little bit simpler and the second design will be slightly more complicated, but both of them can be constructed using materials that you find at home. You will need a pair of knee-high pantyhose, scissors, and duct tape, or in this case, packing tape. For the more complex net design, you will need specifically a plastic bottle with a screw top lid. For the simpler net design, you will need a piece of cylindrical plastic that you don't care much about. Now it's nice to have a hole punch, but you can just use scissors if you're very careful. The first step for a more complex design is to cut the soda bottle into three pieces. Take a look at the edges and try to neaten them up if there are any sharp bits poking out. Like this one right here, it's, like, it's kind of a jagged edge. We want to take those jagged edges off as much as possible so that we don't create a run in the pantyhose. The pantyhose is the net part, and if it gets a run in it, all of our little plankton can come right out of the net. This piece is meant to hold open the collection end of our net so the plankton will come in. Um, and we don't really need a piece this big, so I'm going to cut it about in half and we'll use half of it for the more complex net design and the other half for the simpler design. Now we're going to prep our net and attach the net to the collection end. The next step is to use the tape to secure the nylon stocking in place. And we're going to do the same thing with this ring, except we're going to insert it on this end. Now we need to place attachments for our towing line. Now this is the part where a hole puncher comes in handy, but if you're very careful you can do it with scissors. I recommend the hole punch. This is our plankton net. So, now that you have your net, you need a way to drag it through the water. You can either wade out into the water and pull it along with your hands, or you can attach a tow rope to it. I suggest attaching a tow rope. So you need string and scissors and first we're going to make a bridle for it which means we're going to have a piece of string coming from each of the holes be tied together so that it will drag straight through the water instead of at an angle it's important when you tie the bridle together to make sure that the net is balanced see right now it's kind of crooked so I'm going to take this string and pull it up so that it's more level. We've made our more complex net design. The simpler net design is very similar. The only part that it's missing is this official plankton catching piece. That's the only real difference between the two. I'm going to build this one pretty quickly because it's basically the same thing as doing just this piece. Now that you're the proud owner of a plankton net, it's time to go sampling. You'll need to locate a body of water. I'm here at the Horn Point Pier, so we're going to be sampling the Chop Tank River today. You will also need a long length of rope or string to tow your net, a cup, and a clear jar. Fill this cup with water from your water body. And now it's time to tow. Lower your plankton net into the water, collector end first. You can always help it sinking by adding a small weight to the cap end. 
And as you drag it along, the idea is to keep the opening of the net under the water's surface. The zooplankton that we're trying to catch are concentrated up at the surface because they're feeding on phytoplankton. That's why this water looks green. There's a lot of phytoplankton in it. So, that's why we want to drag our net right along the surface to catch those zooplankton. Now the best times to sample are generally dawn and dusk because that's when they're most concentrated at the surface. But for demonstration purposes, I'm doing this at midday just so you can see what I'm doing. When you're done sampling your plankton, then it's time to examine what you've caught. So you have your clear jar for examination ready and open, your cup of water from the body you've sampled from, and you're going to pull your net up and rinse it down so that any plankton stuck onto the net are going to go into your catch right there. Now this catch area holds more water than this jar will, so we're going to empty some water out by kind of just tilting, letting it drain, and the plankton will filter onto here. So we'll give this another rinse into our jar. That looks better? Alright. So to empty this, you just take this cap off while it's over top of your examination jar. Trying to keep your fingers out of the way if you can. There we go. And give it a rinse through that side we tipped through. Kind of all around if you can. There we go. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so let's cap our jar and set it somewhere in the sun. So we can let the debris fall to the bottom or float to the top, and we can see our plankton swimming around in between. Alright, so you drag the other net in the exact same way, just under the surface. Only it's a little harder to get this one to sink than it is to get the other one. You might have to wait a little bit. So, this one does not have a catch portion, so what you need to do is invert it. Push it through the other side, gently, slowly, all the way down to the toe portion. Then pull your hand out, and keeping the, the toe in the jar, pour your cup of water through it to knock the plankton off and into the jar. You can also rinse it down this way too. There you go. Now, just like you did before, cap it off. Okay, so this is our catch a couple minutes later after the debris has settled, and you can see down at the bottom there are some little things kind of fluttering around. They look round and they're kind of fluttering in loop de loops and swirls hovering around near the bottom. When you're done looking at your plankton, don't forget to return them to the water from where they came.